Erev Tov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benoon and you're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom and good evening and uh, we're glad to see that you guys are able to make it here tonight on Israeli News Live on our live stream programming here. We have very, very interesting news that has taken place, something that was very alarming that I wanted to be able to share with you guys today. Uh, and this, we're going to start off, this is a video that I want you to actually to be able to see. Uh, so let's take a look, let's go right to this video footage here. And this is something that has just um, um, been able, that has just come out. Let's take a look at this quickly. You're able to see this on your screen now. Uh, this is put out by the Iranians themselves. And as you're seeing, it is definitely a military they're, they're, they did a professional video here showing different militaries from around the Middle East preparing for a war on Jerusalem take a look at this let's watch it just for a few seconds Very disturbing to say the least to see uh, what we see here on our screen here and showing the different uh, Arabic militaries coming together to launch an attack on Israel. Uh, and that's exactly right what you're seeing there, the Temple Mount uh, in the background there. And of course, the whole idea is to show an attack on Israel. Um, so at any rate there, um, we realize that, uh, that these things are definitely um, things that are coming about very soon and um, very much uh, could be a tragedy to say the very least there. Also, I'd like to share with you here, this is Mike Huckabee here. Uh, Mike uh, was, uh, was in Israel today and Mike did a, uh, uh, was doing a broadcast here. Mike was, was definitely taking a stand for Israel in his comments there. Uh, very much uh, pleased to see Mike Huckabee. And uh, I, I was surprised. I was not quite uh, aware of his commitment to the Jewish people. Uh, he speaks in here. He's, he's against the Iranian, um, uh, the Iranian uh, nuclear deal that, that the President Obama has worked out with the Iranians. He's very vocal about it. As well, it does not appear that he is for a two-state solution whatsoever. His comments are very frank about this. Uh, he says you cannot have two governments uh, running the show in one land. He said it can only be one. He goes back and mentions the Dalfour de Declaration as well. Uh, so uh, very much, uh, I appreciated his comments and, and we shared his video on Israeli News Live on our Facebook page. Uh, I encourage you, look up that video there uh, and comment. Comment directly, let them show your support there. Let them know you, 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 know, you, you saw this on IsraeliNewsLive.org and show your support for Mike Huckabee uh, and his stand for Israel. This is the type stand uh, that we believe that people should be making. And uh, like I said, I was, I was very much, very much in favor of what I saw here with Mike Huckabee there uh, and trying to build the support for uh, the Jewish people there. Uh, so clearly, as I said, we are seeing uh, that the Iranians are definitely preparing something there. And I want to share with you a, a yet another uh, very disturbing article here uh, that as well, uh, something else at uh, Israel National News. And this actually came out a couple of days ago, but let me just bring you to this real quick. Uh, this article here on Israel, is, uh, Israel National News there, as you can see, Arut Shiva or IsraelNationalNews.com, right up here at the top here, those of you that maybe have not looked at this before. The article reads, Iran deploys new fighter jets meant to combat Israel. By the way, they have the same capabilities Israeli jets have there. Uh, so it looks like Obama was certainly trying to level the playing field for the Iranians uh, uh, against the Israeli nation there. 
says here in the article, uh, uh, Iran's defense minister, Brigadier General uh, Jose uh, uh, Dekan, on Tuesday gave a rundown on the Army's upcoming military buildup and, uh, and revealed that a new fighter jet announced on, in February has been delivered to the Iranian Air Force. All, they've already got it. I mean, this, this is absolutely deplorable. Uh, they've already got the jets there. So the jet unveiled in February is meant to, to be capable of tracing uh, American and Israeli fighter jets, according to the paper, which cited a senior Air Force com uh, commander, Colonel uh, uh, Hosheng uh, Manfredaza, I can't say his name there, saying as much back in February, uh, Sakwa, Two fighter, uh, fighters have been delivered to the Air Force and training jets has also been tested and is used for manufacturing. The DACON announced on Tuesday and time for National Defense Industri Industry Day. He also spoke about Iran's ballistic missile program, which is preparing to test the floating UN resolutions concerning the missile test uh, in context of the Iran nuclear deal. Speaking directly about the upcoming ballistic missiles drills, he said they will not be stopped by the UN Secretary Council uh, resolution. We are working on increasing our missiles precision and want to make them impenetrable to electronic warfare and interception, he said. Uh, he added that long-range ballistic missiles with multiply re-entry vehicle payloads have been domestically produced, saying we are, uh, after turning our ground-based missiles into air-launched uh, missiles. By the way, uh, let me just share with you what... Uh, we, uh, let me back up here just for a moment here. Iran also, you know, Russia made this deal with them quite some time back already about the S-300 uh, air defense missiles, which actually can intercept incoming uh, missiles that, that Israel or, you know, if Israel was attacking them, they could actually intercept those. That deal has been approved. It is going through. They are going to get delivery of, the delivery of these anti-missile uh, batteries. Now, if, if I understand correctly, these particular anti-missile batteries also have the capability of a supersonic speed there. This is uh, what Russia developed in order to be able to also, uh, to, to where the U.S. could not knock down any of the missiles that they actually send out. If it has that type of technology there, all the Iranians have to do is study it in order to be able to make their own supersonic missile uh, for an attack on Israel so they could convert what's been used in the S-300 and, and, and convert it around as a weapon instead. And therefore, Israel's Iron Dome may be not able to stop the incoming missiles. As they say in the article here, they're trying to develop uh, missiles that are, uh, that are not stoppable by Israelis. Uh, so... Clearly, uh, the, the Iranians are preparing for a war. They're showing it in their videos, already letting you know they're going to attack. They're going to do a ground invasion. Now, I like to call this the Vatican's force. And as, as much as I hate to admit this, it is definitely the Vatican and Russia is not helping the matters at all. I mean, you know, I've, I've sided with Russia in the Ukrainian conflict because clearly this is not something that they have provoked. But when it comes to Israel, Russia is definitely in the wrong by backing Iran and not only arming Iran, but also giving them the means to be able to protect themselves against the Israeli state. And Russia claims to be an ally to Israel, but in reality, they're not an ally to Israel. They're an ally to the Palestinian nation there uh, because they have made their agreements with the Palestinians. So Israel's future where Russia is concerned is a grave issue nonetheless. And of course, with them arming Iran and all these issues here, it appears to be that it also plays in Russia's interest for there to be an attack on the Israeli people in order for Russia to make sure that they, their oil and natural gas deal with the Palestinians can be secured. Because naturally, if Iran does do this attack, which they will in the near future, then uh, it would secure the deal that Russia already has because Iran is an ally of Russia, uh, not <laughs> in the very least to say there. So it, it's a major issue here, a major situation that is taking place there and, uh, and quite much, very much biblical as we can see that uh, these things are uh, to definitely to, to happen uh, without a doubt there. Uh, let's move on to other news as well. Um, 
I'd like to uh, take you into another issue. This is something that is very alarming. And uh, again, it, it is something that, that appears to be that the United States and Russia may very well end up in a major conflict in Eastern Europe. Now, we happen to be in Eastern Europe right now. We will next month be, be, be back in Israel. Uh, but uh, we are in Eastern Europe as of right now. And the U.S. has launched the, the biggest or the largest Allied airborne drill since the Cold War ended. And this, according to Yahoo News, has been on many news outlets already. Uh, it is a major war game that is going on in Eastern Europe right now. Uh, this is U.S. So, uh, Army soldiers take part in a joint military drill in Bulgaria. Army at Novo Siola military ground on June 25th. Uh, which is kind of interesting. We're just now getting this news here, or at least that's the picture there. But it says, uh, Brussels Air Force uh, AFP, the United States said Tuesday, it has launched the biggest Allied airborne drills in Europe since the Cold War ended as a fighting involving, uh, involving pro-Russian separatists escalated in Eastern Ukraine. Well, it's the United States that is provoking that particular confrontation. As we showed you in the news the other day, you actually see military soldiers, U.S. military soldiers, uh, that are there in Ukraine that have been helping along the Ukrainians in this, in this battle there. U.S. has also sent in special force units uh, uh, in order to try to take back Don, uh, Donbass and uh, Luhansk uh, regions, which are a self-proclaimed uh, 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 force there. Uh, but anyway, it says nearly 5,000 soldiers from 11 NATO allies are partaking part in a four week of a simultaneous multinational airborne operations across Germany, Italy, Bulgaria, and Romania that began in Saturday. The U.S. Army said in a statement, Swift Response 15 is the largest allied airborne training event on the continent since the end of the Cold War. According to the statement from the U.S. Army uh, Grafen War in southern Germany, it is designed to help allied high Readiness forces act as one and demonstrate the Alliance's capacity to rapidly deploy and operate in support of maintaining a strong and secure Europe, it said. The statement made no reference to the crisis in Ukraine where government troops have been fighting pro-Russian separatists since April last year, which has claimed the lives of nearly 7,000 people and many civilians, I might add, uh, uh, east, uh, and that is in eastern Ukraine, the Russian population there. While the conflict eased after a truce on February, fighting has escalated in recent days. The fighting has stirred the highest tension since the Cold War and ended up more than two decades ago as the West accuses Russia of not uh, arming the rebels but sending in troops to support uh, them. Uh, Moscow denies the charges, which to me, Moscow has every bit of the right to support uh, the people that are Russians. It's the same thing as if Americans were, if we had a large uh, uh, contingency of Americans in a particular country, for, for whatever purpose they may be, the United States will come in to protect the Americans, and they have every right to do so uh, when they have American lives that are involved. And the people of Eastern uh, Ukraine are Russian people. They were part of the Soviet Union at one time. They're very loyal to this. And they're being massacred and murdered uh, by uh, neo-Nazi uh, West Ukrainians that absolutely despise them. It is a genocide, to say the very least, uh, in this here. And, and quite alarming, in fact, uh, that, 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 um, that NATO is even a part of this genocide that is going on. Uh, you know, it, it'd be one thing if you know, the democratic government had changed, but an overthrow when there's so much overwhelming evidence that NATO and the allies were involved in the overthrow of the Ukrainian government. It's not even funny. Uh, but anyway, uh, huge drill there. And let me share, this is another issue here. And this is what really shows us uh, that we've got a serious situation going on. And this is on TASS Russian news agency. Putin has actually got involved in expressing his concern here on what's going on, and it says Putin threat of external forces destabilizing situation in Crimea, uh, Crimea remains. Um, and yes, it definitely is. This is this is not just Ukraine. Now this is Crimea. Uh, it says outside forces are training saboteurs for uh, uh, super sub, sub, subversive activities in Crimea, and these risks should be taken into account. Russian Pre President Vladimir Putin said Wednesday at a security meeting in Crimea. Uh, now, let me kind of bring up the speed on this. Ukraine, uh, Poroshenko, uh, the, the um, 
the, the so-called uh, prime minister of Ukraine, has stated already that they are going to take back Crimea as well. Not just eastern Ukraine they're fighting for, but they're planning on taking back uh, Crimea. And of course, the United States has taught them very effectively the way you do it is through an overthrow or causing strife and unrest in the country. And uh, Putin is certainly catching on to this already, and they're seeing this happen. Uh, so they're preparing for it. And uh, so let's go back to the article here and take, take, a, take a better look at this. It is evident that the threat of, of part of external forces to destabilize in this or that way, the situation on the peninsula remains, either to play a nationalist card or using these or those mistakes, blunders, and inefficient actions of the authorities to direct the citizens just concerned to a destructive ally. Putin says, and he's referring directly, when, when you see Putin talk like that, he's talking about the United States. See, he says, just concerned to a destructive ally. The United States is supposed to be uh, Russia's ally, but acting in very much a destructive manner, to say the very least there. Uh, Putin said, the actions evidently aimed at rocking the situation, hindering normal life of people, the social economic development of the region. It's necessary to take into account all these risks and uh, react in a proper way for both federal and local power bodies. The president said he noted that nothing should be exaggerated or formatted, uh, but it's necessary uh, to keep everything uh, in mind and be ready and react promptly. Uh, you can go on and read the rest of this article, by the way, on uh, Israeli News Live, our Facebook page where we have this uh, particular article there. Um, and like I said, just very much, um, uh, very, very serious situation, no doubt. And by the way, we have one more uh, issue here. Let me, this is just now coming out on TASS News here. Um, and uh, let's take a look at this real quick here. Township and uh, Telmanovo, now Flashpoint in Donbass is what the article, the headline of the article here is saying here. Uh, this was just posted here. Uh, monitors have registered a sharp increase in the shelling of the township of Telmanovo, located in the territory of the self-proclaimed unrecognized Donetsk uh, People's Republic. The deputy chief of the OSCE Special Monitoring Mission, Alexander uh, Hugues, said on Wednesday, as many as 180 uh, encroachments on the ceasefire were registered last week. The mission's obser observation point in the city of uh, Donetsk pointed out Telemanovo on the main hot spot of shelling in the territory of the DPR. The Donetsk News Agency quoted him on Monday. Uh, the the, it says here that the um, Defense Ministry of the DPR said situation on Donbass had degenerated into a full-blown crisis. The past few weeks, however, have seen a new sharp aggravation of tensions in Donbass and reports on victims among civilians have appeared again. Officials in uh, Donsk and Luhansk republics have said many a time observance of ceasefire is contingent entirely on the actions of the pro-Kiev forces. Uh, at any rate, very serious situation going on around the world, and, uh, and it's very sad to see that it is certainly spiraling out of control. I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live. If you, uh, this is a blessing to you, our news program here, please go by our website, israelinewslive.org. It is a free service there, and we depend on your support in making this happen there. I'll be reporting to you live from Israel here in the very coming uh, next few weeks here. We'll be on the ground and picking up those things that are going on there, take you up to the Syrian border as well and be uh, showing, sharing some of these things with you. And by the way, this is our new time for our new slot for live stream. So if you're wanting to catch the live stream broadcast here, it's 9 p.m. in Eastern Europe, 10 p.m. in Russia at the very moment. And of course, it should be about 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the United States. Shalom and good evening.